The Origins of Religion A Dissertation Upon the Divine Manna of the Ancient Jews and the Eucharist of the Catholic Church, the Blood and Body of Christ, as Reference to Sacred Mushrooms by Rev. Nicholas B. Fela, Audiobook Throughout the ancient stories of humanity, plants and fungi have been used as sources to contact the divine realms of the shaman. These experiences are often potent enough to form mystics, prophets, spiritual gurus, and even gods. Psychedelic substances in the modern age have been virtually demonized and condemned by most modern members of society or labeled as recreational by others, leaving any claims to a spiritual connection castrated at the thesis statement. Scholars fear tackling this subject by reality of being ostracized from peers and or banished as a heretic from the church, if not outright imprisoned by the state. Holidays such as Christmas, Easter, Holy Communion, and marriage all have their roots in the experience that Christ is centered upon, sacred mushrooms. This book takes a look into the myths, artwork, and stories that surround religions and breaks down how each individual can come into direct communication with God by instituting the true Holy Blessed Sacrament. Chapter 1. Seeking the Answers when seeking answers to questions of ancient religions that predate our modern life amenities and technologies, we must essentially look far back enough into a time period where man was living naked outdoors. Religion had not yet taken the dogmatic ritualistic forms that it holds today, but it is also important to understand that ancient people were communing with spiritual realms through psychoactive herbs and fungi. We derive our word pharmacist from the Greek pharmakos, meaning enchanter or wizard. These ancient pharmakos were using plants, herbs, and minerals for the purposes of their pharmacratical inquiries. Records dating some 2,500 years ago indicate that the Sumerian people were very in touch with the vast properties of which natural remedies could bestow. According to John M. Allegro, a world-renowned Dead Sea Scroll scholar, Ancient Sumerian tablets dating from the 3rd millennia have shown remedies made from snakeskin, saltpeter, figs, cassia, pear, and other natural ingredients. As time progresses, the medical tablets from both Sumerian and Akkadian civilizations include botanical lists of bark, saps, resins, fruits, and more. This kind of careful catalog of plant life does not appear in the Western world until the 5th and 4th centuries BC. During these ancient times, humanity recognized the cycles of life in the world and the dependency for rain in order for earth to produce fruits. It is here that religion begins, with the pattern of life on earth following the rain from the sky, which was seen as the semen from heaven touching the mother earth in order that she will give birth. Hence came about the philosophy that saw the divine creator as the heavenly male impregnating mother earth. Sexual activities may have taken place outdoors for the purposes of stimulating the heavens for its divine reign, which brought crops, becoming the foundational ideas for what we consider today as the ancient sex cults or orgiastic societies. Much of ancient mankind also likely understood the act of coition between male and female to be a signature of life, for life was the fruits of sexual intercourse. This essentially led them to the likeness of male and female combined to be an illustration of the Creator, a symbol of the Divine. From this school of thought came the portrait of the hermaphrodite, both male and female, as the image of God. For a philosophy that believed that the picture of God was a hermaphrodite and nature was the fruits, mushrooms, especially the psychoactive type, proposed a complex situation. While there are many diverse organic organisms that live within the Earth's atmosphere, none are quite as mysterious as the primitive fungi. Quote, the mushroom has been anthropomorphically personified as a man, a god, something of extraterrestrial origins, and a plant god, Soma, who was a mediator between mankind and the gods in the ancient Hindu religious books known as the Vedas. The mushroom itself has very interesting features that resemble, and have been related to, gold, flesh, blood, phallus, vulva, fire, saucer, cup, as well as a disc or orb." Unquote. Arthur 2000. These organisms thrive only on dead organic matter, turning death back into life. 
This is called sopropic nutrition. Fungi are the cause of most serious diseases as well as life-saving antibiotics. Also, these impressive organisms are essentially a seedless fruit that reproduce by a means of asexual microscopic spores. This helps explain the virgin birth stories as well as Jesus raising from the dead, which is often propounded by religions. The stable or manger tales that surround the birth of Jesus is explained by our modern terms holy cow or holy crap since psychedelic mushrooms are also often found on cow's dung. Godlike and characteristic, mushroom spores are scientifically considered to be omnipresent around the globe, with billions percolating freely even in the uppermost areas of the Earth's atmosphere. Spores are so tiny and travel so freely through the air that they are found across ocean airspace and remain active or dormant in all unregulated airspace on the planet, including the interior of homes and vehicles. Mushroom spores have been dated to remain dormant for millions of years and are still capable of becoming activated when conditions are suitable for their growth. The toughest organic material on the planet is the outer shell of the spore, and it is believed that this is, aids them in escaping the Earth's atmosphere and entering into outer space. Once in space, they may stay in hibernation until reaching further destinations, possibly light years away. Upon finding a habitable environment, they will begin the evolutionary process by producing fungi. In contrast to the microscopic spore, the largest organism currently known on the planet is none other than a network of mushroom mycelium produced by spores. Weighing in at more than enormous blue whales and even covering more turf than aspen groves, the network of white mycelium that thrives in eastern Oregon, United States, encompasses over 2,000 acres as it holds the title for the largest organism on Earth. Miraculously, these organisms take on a completely passive philosophy by remaining non-invasive to the living matter that surrounds them. The mushroom mycelium produced by the spores and by which the mushroom fruit body grows is comprised of hypha or hyphia, which are minute threads or filaments as vulnerable as spider webs. Just as a spore is omnipresent throughout the air, so the mycelium too is present wherever chlorophyll using plants are found. This is because mycelium gives life to all chlorophyll using plants by living in symbiosis with the root systems, providing vital nutrition to the plant matter. Without this network of mycelium, no photosynthesizing plant would exist. It is understandable that the ancient people would have been amazed at its growth without seed and its ability to produce mushroom fruit bodies rapidly after morning dew, as the manna is described in the Bible. However, all of these miraculous facets of the mushroom pale to its ability of causing profound and life-changing experiences when the psychoactive mushroom is simply eaten. Chapter 2 Magic Mushrooms During a personal interview regarding the mushroom experience with author and cultural anthropologist from the University of Arizona, Lara Rezao, she recalled the time her Mazatec mushroom ritual took place just outside Tahuatala de Jimenez, Oaxaca, Mexico with a shaman native to that area. Rezua explained that her mushroom experience was very significant and life-changing. She described the ability, while under the mushroom state, to transmute anger into compassion and have an expanded and wider perspective on self and others. All of existence seemed to come alive, and this offered her a renewed compassion for life and an access to higher wisdom. The Mazatec belief systems that incorporate Catholicism and sacred mushrooms call the mushrooms sacred children and believe that the mushrooms sprang from the blood of Christ after his resurrection. The mushroom also provides shaman with methods for healing illnesses and gaining insight. When they take the mushrooms, their spirits fly, and they can communicate with the mushroom deities. As one author writes of the mushroom-induced experience, this experience is one of extremely great value so much so that I feel it is necessary to the evolutionary process of each and every individual and inevitably to all of mankind. Since certain fungi contain drugs with marked hallucinatory properties, it is not only in Christianity where this understanding is useful, but all throughout the world. 
It is not surprising that the mushroom should have become the center of a mystery cult in the Near East which persisted for thousands of years. There seems good evidence that from there it swept into India in the cult of the Soma some 3,500 years ago. It certainly flourished in Siberia until quite recent times, and is found even today in certain parts of South America. The secrets of the mushroom cults still persist today. For example, Spores that fall to the ground from the rounded cap will often form a circular network of mycelium, and over time, as mushrooms grow from these mycelium rings, the rings will grow out as the mycelium ages. So the size of the ring indicates the age of the mycelium patch, similar to the rings in the trunk of a tree. These mycelium rings, many of which lie just underneath the Earth's visual surface, are scientifically termed as fairy rings. Important to note, one of the largest fairy rings in the world is located in England and actually surrounds none other than the megalithic monument known today as Stonehenge. Understanding the secret that religion is based on mushroom use becomes that much more easily understood for the layman and the Stonehenge still stands as a point to this fact. It is no surprise that Nordic Germanic gods have connection to the mushroom in their mythology. As Thor throws his mushroom-shaped hammer to the ground, mighty thunders and lightning cracks cause the real mushrooms to appear. As the horse is pulling Odin through the sky and his chariot become overexerted, their blood-mingled spit falls to the ground and causes the Amanita muscaria mushroom to grow at those exact points. Learning the basic scientific terms for the parts of a mushroom helps the researcher to decipher the wordplays of the ancient mystery schools. Many psychedelic mushrooms contain patterns under the cap that are described as fish-like gills. In fact, according to the Nature Program's book entitled Mushrooms, scientific terms for the mushroom include words such as fleshy, fruit body, gills, life cycle, veil, and ring. Hence, one can actually eat flesh from a mushroom that has gills like a fish. This is the basic wordplay for eating from the flesh of God, symbolized by a fish or the sign of the fish or Pisces. As Jesus said in John 6, This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that a person may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever and the bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Furthermore, archaeologist and Dead Sea Scroll scholar John M. Allegro professes in regards to the ancient fertility and mushroom cults that, quote, it should be remembered that they were heirs to a very long tradition of this kind of word spinning. Allegro explains that word plays can be purposefully disguised, a means whereby special secret names of the holy plant could be conveyed to the initiate through his informed group leader, without their being revealed to the outsider." Unquote. The famous Greek physician, pharmacologist, and botanist of over 1500 years ago, Padanius Discordes, documented that after visiting the Magi of Persia, Arabia, Ethiopia, Egypt, Discordes declares that the special names of the plants are hidden under the title of prophets or prophetia. Therefore, a body of cultic tradition primarily concerned with the accurate transmission of the special occultic names of the drug plants and their incantations has been kept hidden for centuries. This explains the main reason that it is so important for the Jewish, Christian, Islamic, and other religions to know the true name of their God, just as the ancients understood. Knowing the true name of the gods and prophets gives the initiate understanding and insight to locating the particular organic matter that is being mentioned. As Psalms 9:10 reads, As those knowing your name will trust in you, for you will certainly not leave those looking for you, O Jehovah. This is found throughout the Bible and other religious texts by deciphering the proper names of prophets and gods, for they are often the names of substances which were labeled with qualities such as holy and divine. Chapter 3 Holidays 
Word plays on the mushrooms are countless in terms of religious ritual and holiday. When discussing the development of a fruit body from mycelium, the Nature Program describes it like this. A very young and undeveloped mushroom that is still covered with its veil is called an egg. The young mushroom has the shape of a chicken egg completely covered by a thin membrane called the universal veil. The veil then bursts and reveals the junction of the stem and cap, male and female. Searching for the mushroom while they are still in the egg state is what the Easter egg hunt rituals are clearly centered upon. Under the main visual mushroom structure remains the vulva, which essentially holds the mushroom in what appears to be a sort of grail. Furthermore, once the veil is lifted from what is considered the rib of the mushroom and the stem and cap are revealed, a ring of tissue is left by the female cap around the finger-like mushroom male stem. The revelation of the marriage ritual is blatant with the new understanding regarding the lifting of the veil to reveal the unification of the two sexes with the physical ring remaining. This revelation of how a mushroom develops is also the basis for the biblical creation story of female emerging from the male's rib in Genesis. Historically, shamans are known to ritualistically dress in attire that resembles the substances that they induce to obtain their trance states. The word Christmas originally comes from the Egyptian Christ and mast. Christ can be noticed in our modern terms such as Crisco oil and is related to Christo, Christo, and Christ the anointed one, or one anointed with oil. The mushroom is naturally oily, and some secrete a psychoactive oil, especially when being dried. Evidence even suggests that friars may have smeared this oil on their freshly shaved scalps. So our story of Christmas, or Christmas, arises from Siberian shaman going into the woods seeking out the red and white colored psychoactive Amanita muscaria mushroom that grows in a symbiotic relationship with the roots of the pine tree. Hence the theme of green, red, and white as Christmas colors originates from the green pine tree with red and white spotted mushrooms underneath. Dressed up as the Amanita muscaria sacrament in a red and white outfit, not much unlike many outfits worn by popes, high priests, and of course Santa Claus, the shaman would gather the mushrooms for the townspeople. First, the shaman would pluck some of the mushrooms from the ground and place them in the trees to begin drying, like an ornament hung in a tree. After enough mushrooms had been gathered for the community, the shaman would bag them up and bring the partially dried gifts back to the yurts for delivery. In Siberia, where the Amanita mushroom is abundant and has a cultic history, the snow would sometimes block the doorways of the yurt homes, so the gift-bearing shaman would be forced to climb down the chimneys. Before eating, the Amanita muscaria must be fully dried or it can be toxic. So once the mushrooms were delivered, the families then hung them in stockings above the fireplace to dry them out completely overnight, making sure they were edible for consumption. The red and white fly agaric, also known as the Amanita muscaria, has a bright and beautiful look. Its psychedelic effects have made it a legend. From the bush that Moses spoke with, which was on fire but did not burn up, to the Holy Grail of Immortality and the Sacred Soma of the Vedas. Muscaria mushrooms may be central to Christmas and the actual blood of Christ. After the stockings were hung, the family would scurry off to bed only to awaken to dried Amanita muscaria mushrooms ready to be eaten. The laymen and children, which were allowed to partake in the sacred substance, either saw beautifully colorful heavenly bright lights and had a wonderful time communing with the divine realms because they were good and happy people, or if they were naughty, a bad trip caused them to enter a place of terror called hell. 1 Corinthians 11 reads, So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be finally condemned with the world." Unquote. 
The final and main ritual to be understood about the mushroom is Eucharist, or communion, as described by the Catholic Church. It is important to understand that the doctrine of transubstantiation was established under Emperor Pope Innocent III in the early 1100s, whereby the priests claimed to transmute an ordinary wafer, or cracker, into the literal body of Christ. This is because the Church recognizes the importance that the Bible puts on the actual eating of Christ's body. John 6 reads, quote, Then Jesus said unto them, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him." Unquote. It is also important to note here that the Amanita muscaria is the blood-red mushroom, which contains the psychoactive ingredient known as muscimol, whereas the gold cap and other psychoactive mushrooms contain a different active ingredient known as psilocybin. Combining these distinct fungi may be the answer to the blood and body parables. Chapter 4 Modernity Credible organizations are increasingly studying magic mushrooms active ingredient psilocybin. United States-based John Hopkins School of Medicine and the Neuropsychopharmacology Unit based in the United Kingdom's Imperial College of London have scientific research which concludes, by means of new medical technologies including fMRI brain scans, that psilocybin actually dampens activity in the brain which is associated with depression. This means that psilocybin patients should have a more optimistic outlook on life and this offers a safe alternative to current legal prescription medications. Research is showing that psilocybin mushrooms are a psychologically healthy experience when used responsibly and have physical healing effects such as the ability to suppress pain in individuals who suffer from migraines. These results complement a previous study conducted in 2011 which also showed a lasting decrease in anxiety levels for patients who had undergone only a single dose of psilocybin. Individuals taking these treatments have even suggested that a mystical experience is obtainable through ingestion of this natural substance and many have rated the experience to be as significant as having their first child. The studies even show that psilocybin can have a dramatic increase on memory and vivid imagination. New work done by Professor John Rush reveals that mushrooms have been encrypted into holy Judeo-Christian images for centuries. It is also important to recognize that artists who worked on these basilisks were required to have credentials of those only initiated into adept teachings of the religion and therefore understood the means by which to conceal their messages into the artwork. By cataloging and reviewing artwork found within cathedrals from the antiquity to modern times, Rush concludes in his book, The Mushroom in Christian Art, that Christ has actually been depicted as referring to mushrooms in Christian artwork for hundreds of years, more blatantly originally, and then slowly encrypted into hidden images as persecution forced these religions into underground and secret guilds and churches. Rush also explains that in the earliest forms of Christian art, Christ was not depicted as a human being at all. Quote, it wasn't until Jesus was declared fully God and fully human by decree that we start to see actual images of Jesus Christ in the artwork. Unquote. Rush 2011 Mushrooms breathe oxygen and are genetically, biochemically, and structurally more similar to humans and animals than to plants. And this is becoming a matter of great interest to modern researchers such as botanists, mycologists, and microbiologists, just to name a few. Anthropologist and botanist Terence McKenna suggested that the mushroom was a possible locality for an alien life form on Earth that originated from another planet or galaxy. This idea is partially due to the fungi's physical features of working in the essential trinity fashion in the three necessary stages, first from the spore, then to the mycelium, and finally into the psychedelic, conscious expanding, information providing mushroom fruit body. Mycologist and author Paul Statmans also concludes that evidence supports the notion that the kingdom of fungi are actually sentient species 
perhaps even more evolved than Homo sapiens. From microscopic spores to colossal monuments, it is only when the flesh of the gods is produced as a mushroom and ingested by mankind in which the alien presence or spiritual entities are able to commune or communicate with individuals. Textual research and study on this topic will not allow a person to fully grasp the magnitude of this phenomena. First-hand understanding is through the ingestion of the holy substance, the mushrooms, of which there has been so much written that this brief expose merely scratches the surface of. Personal ingestion of the sacred sacrament provides a direct experience that is essential for the growth of the individual and humanity alike. Conclusion Through research into religious texts from around the world and a closer look into the symbolism that surrounds them, we can clearly see that psychedelic substances have been the centerpiece for religious experiences since the ancient times. Perhaps this will help shed light onto the modern practices that have their roots in such a faraway time, yet still thriving in symbiosis with the fungi traditions of today. It is extremely important, however, that this phenomenon be brought to the world of academics. For as one scholar writes, quote, the extraordinary situation has arisen that this most important mushroom cult from which much of mythology of the ancient Near East sprang has been almost completely overlooked by historians, unquote. It is in the ancient texts and artwork, as well as the experiences of brave individuals, which have helped to uncover the literal blood and body of Christ that our modern times is in such desperate need of. Ancient Egyptian Royal Motifs as Referencing P. Cubensis by Nicholas B. Fela Audiobook. The motif of the sacred scarab symbol, or dung beetle, is a distinctly predominating theme in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and amulets. The ancient Egyptians even depicted the dung beetle as a religious deity known as Capri. Its prevalence as sacred imagery has been ill explained by past archaeologists and Egyptologists. Many historical explanations of the divinity attributed to this beetle have been based upon assumptions that the dynasties of ancient Egypt had misunderstood the biology of the beetle, and that it was this misunderstanding which led the Egyptians to keep the beetle in such high esteems. Secondary research, which was triggered by newly discovered evidence, obtained and presented by scholars such as Gordon R. Wasson, Roger Heim, Albert Hoffman, and others on the newly discovered genus of psilocybin mushrooms, offers possible explanations to more realistic motives behind ancient Egyptians' use of the sacred scarab symbol. By taking a holistic perspective on the Egyptian culture, through examining a variety of information ranging from accepted religious myths in ancient Egypt, to individual hieroglyphs, artifacts, and even monumental temple structures, as well as the historical ecology of Egypt, this paper deciphers the significance of the sacred scarab dung beetle, as well as the sacred cow, the sun disk, and the historical use of the two wheat ears symbolism with explanation of their possible encrypted reference to psilocybe. The connections made here are intended to provide information that may alter the current perspectives regarding many of ancient Egypt's most common motifs. Throughout ancient Egypt, the dung beetle, an insect of the order of Coleopetra, family of Scarabiaodia, genus of Keper, and the species of Keper Egyptorium had become one of the most common symbols represented in Egyptian iconography. Ancient Egyptians would have collectively known this dung beetle as the sacred scarab. To illustrate how popular the symbol of the beetle became in ancient Egypt, it ought to be understood that the beetle was so sanctified by the people of ancient Egypt that they endowed it as a religious figure. Keper, also known as Kepri, is not only the modern genus name of the beetle, but also the name given to the actual Egyptian deity, whom was identified symbolically by a human body with a dung beetle for his head. Scare beetles were apparently so important to the ancient Egyptian culture that their images are depicted all throughout royal tomb walls, in artwork, and in hieroglyphs. Many times they are depicted holding an orange or golden disc. 
Images of the sacred scarabs are not only included on paintings and engravings, but also range from simple to elaborate items, and were worn on all types of jewelry such as rings, necklaces, pectorals, and bracelets. Another popular object in Egypt that maintained this image is known as the heart scarab. Heart scarabs are small, varying in size, with some approximately 3 inches long, 2 inches wide, and about a half inch or larger in thickness. These manufactured figurines were commercially produced in ancient Egypt and closely resemble a scarab beetle with a flat base. The base contained varying engraved inscriptions. The amulets were traditionally mummified near the hearts of all deceased whom were given a proper burial, commoner and royalty alike. It was said that these amulets would assist in achieving an eternal afterlife. To exemplify the importance of this predominating insect symbol in the ancient world of Egypt, the scarab-shaped amulet with encryptions at the base also became the primary method for clay sealing documents and goods, similar to more modern wax sealing, and by circa 2000 BCE, all government officials, high and low, were appointed scarab amulets with their names and titles engraved upon the base. Some hard scarab amulets, which were encrypted with the name of deceased rulers, are said to have been produced in bulk and were historically offered at funerary temples as souvenirs by the royal families. A variety of scarab amulets, no single one identical, were manufactured from practically any kind of stone available, and even the use of precious metals are seen in scarab objects. It has been said that the popularity of the scarab motif was equaled only to that of the famous Eye of Horus. From about 2200 BCE to late in Egyptian history, scarabs remained one of the most common objects manufactured in all of Egypt. The number of scarab items found is in the hundreds of thousands, with scarab symbolism and items located within every single excavation site across Egypt many of which include a depiction of an orange or golden disc in the beetle's grasp or between its wings. The physical dung beetle, or scarab, is typically about 8 to 11 millimeters long, black, and has encased wings on its back, which it can expand and use for short-term, low-elevation flights at heights of about a half meter above the ground. Today we see the majority of extant beetles within the order of Coleopetra Scarabida typically display one of two behavioral traits. One, rollers, which is a task of the male beetles who use their powerful spade-like forearms to collect and mold dung into a nearly perfect sphere or ball, about four to five times its size, comparable to the size of an apple, which is then easily rolled to their tunnel or buried in sand. Two, tunnelers, believed to be the focus of female beetles these beetles burrow tunnels often directly beneath cow dung, where they will store dung for food, nest building, and egg laying. The tunnelers start by burrowing four to eight inches deep into the ground, where they will then hollow out a chamber. The chambers are approximately four inches square, in which the beetle brings the dung and mushroom material into. Next, in the small hollowed four inch chamber, the female uses the material from the dung and mushrooms to form a nesting ball. The nesting ball is not a perfect spherical ball like the others which are rolled and used only as a food source, but instead the nesting ball is pear shaped and includes a hollow piercing at its tip. Note the shape of the Egyptian Ankh. It is at the hollow piercing of the tip in which the eggs will be placed before the chamber is then sealed off. Furthermore. Once the scarab eggs hatch, the newborn pupas burrow deeper into the earth and create a second underground chamber while further developing until emerging weeks later. Interestingly, some authors have noted that there seems to be striking resemblances with the human burial sites in Egypt utilizing these tunnel chambering techniques with mummies resembling the scarab in its pupa stage. The relationship of the scarab beetle to cow dung is so intertwined that the development of the sacred scarab from egg to adult has only been documented by the use of cow dung. Furthermore, the connection to certain dung beetles and cow's dung can be seen in the controlled studies where lifespans were significantly lower for beetles who were fed foods without dung. 
Reproduction was also not replicable within controlled environments where dung as a food source was not made available and instead replaced by other plausibly viable substrates. A particularly notable aspect regarding the sacred scarab behavior, which was previously alluded to, is that the beetle is known to incorporate mushroom fruit bodies with the focus of mushroom cap and gill sections into both its brood and feeding sources. To further motivate these behaviors, the wet seasons are not only when the maximum dung beetle activity occurs, but also the same wet seasons are the times in which the mushroom fruit bodies are typically in most abundance as well. This notable tendency for dung beetles to feed on mushrooms and incorporate them into nesting has been recorded in several cases and has been well documented in controlled studies where, quote, abundant species were attracted to a variety of food types, but several species appeared to specialize on either dung and or mushrooms, unquote. These facts serve to illustrate that many dung beetles depend on strict use of both dung and mushrooms as the beetle's sole resources of housing and nutrition. A remarkable feature of the cattle dung, which is utilized by the beetles, is the dung's highly supportive nature toward not just any mycological life, but instead, cattle dung is particularly known for producing a psychoactive, hallucinogenic, psilocybin cubensis species. Mushroom species containing psilocybe are said to occur on all continents throughout the globe, including areas of New Guinea, Africa, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, Argentina, Venezuela, and others. Studies of the psilocybin mushroom in both southern Mexico and Houston have shown P. cubensis to thrive, quote, exclusively in pastures on decomposing cow dung or found on cow dung and rice hull compost in fields that support cattle, unquote. Rice hull can be expected to show mycological growth, as cultivation of mushrooms has been successfully applied to a variety of grain substrates particularly grains which do not become soft when boiled, primarily cereal straws such as wheat straw, rice bran, millet straw, soybean straw, and brewer's grain. It appears then that the learned ability of cultivating mycology on wheat substrates, which were particularly abundant in ancient Egypt, can ultimately explain the integration of wheat images with the golden disc in place of the scarab motif with the golden disc. The reason that these mushrooms would have been so sacredly cultivated is because the psilocybin mushrooms contain a special kind of neurotropic hallucinogenic chemical called psilocybe. These mushrooms are famous for their golden or orange tops or caps. It has been well documented that these mushrooms are currently and traditionally used extensively by natives throughout regions of Mesoamerica during religious ritual and ceremony. These mushrooms are known to these native groups as little saints, or flesh of the gods, and it is French mycologist Roger Heim who is credited for the discovery that psilocybe species is the neurotropic mushroom which has traditionally been used during spiritual practices, showing that these, quote, cow patty mushrooms, unquote, have in fact historically been used for ceremony and therefore ancient Egyptians would not be an exclusive group to utilize this substance in ritual. To further explain the importance and sincerity of these substances in religious ceremony, it is important to note that, quote, the Mazatec do, moreover, sometimes suggest it is Christ who speaks to them during their hallucination, unquote. Therefore, it is possible that the attributed neurotic effects of psilocybe to induce spiritual or hallucinogenic experiences which are, quote, commonly known as ego death and spiritual rebirth, were apparently a central, though well-hidden element in many Egyptian religious rituals, unquote. Historically, elite classes using encrypted symbolism to maintain hidden messages is not new and psychoactive substances such as psilocybin mushrooms are traditionally used by the priestly shamanic classes during religious ceremony and or ritualistic settings that are, more often than not, conducted covertly and with great secrecy. As illustrated on an Egyptian passage from the Book of the Dead, a funerary text reserved for the walls of royalty, which reads, 
quote, and you shall perform these ceremonies secretly. Let no stranger anywhere have knowledge of it. Do not speak about it to any man. Do not repeat it." Unquote. The symbolism of the cattle as sacred has also become an extremely common motif within ancient Egyptian artwork. Motifs of the sacred cattle, usually depicted with the disc between its two horns, became a central theme throughout royal religious societies. It is commonly accepted that the bull was historically worshipped in ancient Egypt by groups known with names such as the cults of Menvis, Bucus, Apis, and others. Cattle were so highly ritualized in Egypt that they were culturally portrayed as royalty and even manifestations of deity. The cattle of Egypt, both males and females, typically have larger and more distinct elongated horns when compared to western breeds. The cattle itself, as well as just the horns, can be found in royal Egyptian motifs in several forms such as engravings, statues, and paintings, and are often depicted with a disc, typically golden, between its horns. The disc and horn symbol combination therefore appears to be related to the psilocybe producing dung which is utilized by the sacred beetle. The bull horns, as the two wheat stalks, seem to have become a simple replacement or interchangeable symbol for the beetle arms or wings which traditionally flanked the golden disc. To exemplify this point that the horn and disc symbols are interchangeable with the beetle and disc motifs, we often see a scarab or bird figure underneath the horns. The bird then, commonly falcons or vultures, can easily be interchanged with the bird-like flying scarab motif as an encrypted substitute. Egyptian motifs are also depicted with the beetle blatantly holding the disc and horns simultaneously, presumably to enunciate the symbol combinations. To articulate the sacredness of cattle within the ancient Egyptian empire, it ought to be considered that excavations of Egypt show entire temple structures built specifically for housing and diligently caring for sanctified cattle. The cattle were even depicted as the embodiment of Pharaoh. When the time came, these sacred cattle were bestowed funerary services fit for a king. A sacred cattle's funerary rites would include mummification and telling a heart scarab, treasured gifts, and burial within a sarcophagi, which was specifically made large enough to fit an entire mummified bull. One excavated necropolis of sacred bulls, known as the Serapium of Saqqara, is located near Cairo, Egypt, in a huge underground gallery which contained the massive sarcophagi of some 30 sacred mummified bulls. The large sarcophagi are carved from granite or limestone, and each is accompanied with inscriptions describing the periods in which the sacred bull had lived. The sacred bull's connection to the cow dung inhabiting scarab, and therefore psilocybe, was exemplified by a mark of the scarab encrypted onto the bull's tongue. When archaeologists originally attempted to decipher the importance of these different symbols in ancient Egypt, the themes were simply overlooked by researchers, many of which had little or no information regarding psilocybe. It was previously thought by Egyptologists that the entire ancient Egyptian civilization, including royalty, must have held a, quote, misunderstanding of the behavior and nest building activities of some dung beetles, unquote and that that misunderstanding was maintained throughout the entire history of ancient Egypt for over three millennia. Until recent times, it has thus been accepted that the pharaohs, which are attributed to massive monumental works such as pyramid structures, and whom are said to have been in charge of vastly stretching empires that reigned longer than any known civilization to date, quote, misunderstood the actual birth cycle of the beetle and that they apparently thought of the beetle as being a single sex, male, which planted his seed in the round dung ball out of which came his offspring." Unquote. The notions ascribed to the sacred scarab were thus that the dynasties reigning in Egypt were never aware of the activities of the female beetles. Previously, scholars have accepted these simple notions that ancient Egyptians, quote, very early associated the mistaken view of the dung beetle with the divine power they called Capri, who was a form of the sun god Ra, 
the morning sun reborn by self-regeneration, Thus it can be stated that the new evidence recently provided by Watson and others on sacred psilocybin mushroom use and conglomeration with a plethora of other research has given overwhelming support to this alternative theory, one which propounds that Egyptian artists were not, quote, misunderstanding, unquote, but instead were misunderstood, and that the motifs of the scarab pushing a sun disk is in fact not a depiction of an actual sun at all, but rather inferably the golden cap of a psilocybin mushroom.